This trash container is locked. The body is downwind from here. May trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelict from... What do you mean, Phil? I agree. We should get someone from the remote viewers division here. Oh. It might also be evidence. The mob could have disposed of... We could try using a pry bar, the one you took from my motor carriage. Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rack. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you... Trash, food waste from the... What do you mean, Phil? I agree. We should get someone from the... Oh. It might also be evidence. The force time is... The quality of metal is not the problem. From what I see, it's sturdy enough. There's a creaking sound as the pry bar slips under the lid. You hang from it like a moron. Let's ask the manager for the key. This is... The body is down... Trash? Mm-hmm. The body is downwind. The lieutenant leans. Give me a moment. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. Oh, I do like wizards. And people like that in... She means clairvoyance. I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these halls. If it's barely bigger than a clock. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn, it's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is. You seem committed to it, so go on. The shackle. After you, detective. The cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. He's known as the father of scientific communism, also known as Mazovianism. His theories about economic history greatly influenced, some would even say sparked, the anti-centennial revolution. The White Star, the photos on the wall, I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting.
an intricate web it almost looks like for you to discover. Gone. The cover of this tattered paperback features the man from Yeomd. Behind him, the back blurb below. In sm the story by night. Nine, it is physical and with deadly f A few chapters. This book, The Northmen, the man from Hyamdal extracts a high price from you skip in the center as the v swiftly the visitors toss off there in an instant oh for fucks when the din of battle settles only the man from Hyamdal he probably is but you can't considering the man from Hyamdal stares at you on the cover Guillaume Le Million. Just an ordinary war. Nothing to... A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the door frame. It's going to take one more try to break- You're not thinking of trying again, are you? Barbell lies on the floor. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. You managed to hoist it off the ground, but maybe it wasn't such a good idea to smash through that back door. Proper weightlifting gloves would definitely afford a better grip.
Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm, animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun drifting through the universe. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin and even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men all of them, purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Some people really like building a world, I think, even if it's just for a game. Just look at those details. So much effort. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minami, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, 
the biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker, the mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles, very pathetic. History classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. A list of names under the stations suggests people across six Isolas would be playing Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad, Samara, and even Il Mara. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My God, it's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. The schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble, an echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal... What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Still nothing. Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. Can you please try to refrain from attacking random things? Why do you think there's something on the other side, necessarily? In any case, there's no way we can get in right now. 
bent metal, broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. Kudos. Terrifying ice beer with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the beer's eyes are glowing red. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the beer regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachon Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice beer fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now.
few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spiderwebs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Are these any good? Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock, in better cosmetic order than the others. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this fight. the furnace. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter is coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. The echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? Wait, really? Maybe it's coming from behind those safety curtains we saw upstairs. We should ask the lady in the bookstore what's going on with these curtains. You feel something in your chest, an unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm, your jaw. Very, very bad. This is the end. All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the art.